This is the updated moderate overlap crash test. It now features a dummy in the second row to evaluate how effectively a vehicle safeguards backseat passengers. Today, we'll examine the performance of several popular three-row SUVs in this test. These vehicles are a common choice for family transportation, making this assessment particularly critical. As we'll discover, safety outcomes differ widely across models. The crash test involves a vehicle striking a deformable barrier at 40 miles per hour with a 40% overlap. We'll observe how well the seat belts work to control rear seat dummy movement and also assess the risk of injuries to the rear seat dummy. In particular, we want to see the lap belt remain on the pelvis, the shoulder belt kept away from the neck, and the dummy maintain a safe distance from the front seat. We also want to see low injury risk readings to the dummy's head, neck, chest, and thighs. Based on how a vehicle performs across all these criteria, they will receive a score of either good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. Let's dive in and explore how each vehicle does. The Mazda CX-90 delivers exceptional performance in this test and earns the highest rating of good. Its restraints do a good job controlling the rear seat dummy's movement. The lap and shoulder portions of the seat belts remained in their ideal positions throughout the crash. The seat belts also maintain a safe distance between the dummy's head and the front seats. Data from the rear seat dummy indicates a low risk of injury across all body regions. In contrast, as we'll see with other SUVs, many struggle with one or more of these critical areas. The Kia Telluride exhibits only one slight flaw, with the shoulder belt moving too close toward the dummy's neck. This increases the risk for injury and compromises the ability of the restraints to control dummy movement. Despite this issue, it still achieves a rating of good. The Nissan Pathfinder does well, scoring a good rating in this test. The only shortcoming is the rear dummy's head approach the front seat back, which increases the risk of head injuries. The Buick Enclave secures a rating of good. The rear seat has controlled dummy movement, with the exception of the dummy's head approaching the front seat. This dummy's head or neck also recorded moderate injury risks. It's mostly good news for the Ford Explorer in this test. However, the crash test dummy indicates a moderate risk of injury to the rear passenger's head or neck, and the rear dummy's head comes into close proximity with the driver's seat. Despite these relatively minor shortcomings, the Explorer still achieves a rating of good. The Honda Pilot earns an acceptable rating, one level lower than all the vehicles that we have looked at so far. Its sole issue is that the rear dummy slides under the lap belt, a phenomenon known as submarining. This is dangerous because it increases the risk of abdominal injuries. Apart from this, the dummy records a low risk of injury across all body regions. This pilot features some recent improvements that Honda has made starting with the 2025 model year. When the pilot was redesigned for 2023, the original version allowed the rear seat dummy's head to get too close to the front seat. The updated model keeps the head at a safer distance. The dummy in the 2025 Pilot also records slightly lower injury readings than previous versions. The Chevy Traverse scores a rating of acceptable. Like the Pilot, its primary flaw is that the rear lap belt shifted from the dummy's pelvis onto its abdomen. Additionally, the dummy's head also came too close to the front seat. The GMC Acadia shares a platform with the Chevy which explains why it has nearly identical performance and struggles with the same two issues. In the Subaru Ascent, the rear seat dummy recorded a moderate risk of injuries to the head or neck and chest. Furthermore, the rear dummy's head came into close contact with the front seat, heightening the potential for injuries. Ultimately, the Subaru achieves a rating of acceptable. Unfortunately, 
the Toyota Highlander underperforms in this test, earning the second lowest rating of marginal. The primary issue is that the rear passenger dummy's seatbelt shifts from the pelvis onto the abdomen, elevating the risk of injury. This dummy also experienced moderate head or neck injury risks. The Volkswagen Atlas also achieves a rating of marginal. The rear dummy's head nearly struck the driver's seat. This dummy experienced a moderate risk of head, neck, and chest injuries. What's peculiar about the Atlas is the front dummy's right leg recorded a high likelihood of injuries, something that rarely happens in modern vehicles in this test. The Hyundai Palisade receives the lowest rating of poor, with its rear seat belts being the main source of trouble. The shoulder belt shifts too close to the dummy's neck, while the lap belt slides from the pelvis onto the abdomen. This combination of seat belt shifting reduces the effectiveness of the restraints to control dummy movement. Additionally, the dummy registers a moderate risk of chest injuries. The Jeep Grand Cherokee L also earns a poor rating. Unlike the Palisade, its restraints generally manage dummy movement well, except for the seat belts permitting the rear dummy's head to come too close to the front seat. However, this dummy experienced high head, neck, and chest injury readings. For example, look how much higher the head injury readings are in the Grand Cherokee L compared to the competition. So we just saw a bunch of SUVs get crash tested. Their performance ranges from near flawless in the Mazda CX-90 to poor dummy control in the Hyundai Palisade and high injury risks in the Jeep Grand Cherokee L. In all, five of these SUVs score the highest rating of good, which is great news as it offers consumers plenty of safe options. If you regularly use your rear seat and safety is a priority, you will want to stick with these options. Conversely, you will want to avoid those that were rated marginal or poor. Today, we examined safety performance in only a single crash test. For a broader evaluation of vehicle safety across multiple crash tests, watch this video, which highlights the safest vehicles based on comprehensive testing. Thanks for watching.